Welcome to the next episode of Waterpark Rangers Let's Play Pikmin. In the last episode, we went to the impact site, got the main engine, and met the red Pikmin. And this episode, we're going to the Forest of Hope, now that our ship can fly, to look for more of our missing ship parts. The Forest of Hope is a much larger area than the previous, and it's the start and the official introduction of several of the game's core elements, so I guess you could say this is where the game really starts. My dolphin has returned to the surface along with a Pikmin's onion. Being alone on this strange planet makes me somewhat uneasy, so I shall call the Pikmin out of the onion. All I need to do is stand in the light beneath the onion and press A, which we shall do right now. So we'll just pull down the control stick to get all those Pikmin out, except for one, and we'll keep that one to do something else. Now with all these Pikmin under our command, we can take down this um, stick wall here. It's a white wall, so it'll fall faster than different colored walls. Hey, that one apparently didn't want to build, but it's going to build. And now with this other Pikmin, let's just take down these other pellet posies in the area. So we can grow our Pikmin while we take down the wall. Multitasking. It's a good thing. Especially if you want to finish the game faster. Now I'm not going for like a really fast record, but I do want to finish this game in a reasonable number of days and not take too long. So there will be a few days when we really go all out and try to find as many parts as we can. And then there's going to be some where there's just things to do and uh, things to see. So... My best record, as you've seen from the uh, the start screen where all this, uh, the files are available, the file select screen, that's what that thing is called, is 11 days. I've set, I've beat this game in 11 in-game days. Now, where time comes in, you see that little dial that's now appeared on the top of the screen? It wasn't there on the first day. It is going to be there on all the other days, and when it reaches the end, that means the day is over. And that sound means that that wall is completed as well, so now we can go past it. Now there's our first enemy, the Dwarf Bulborb. It's a small enemy that'll eat your Pikmin, but if you can throw a Pikmin directly on top of it, it'll squash it in a single hit. And that's what we did right there to stop our Pikmin from being digested. And hopefully we can do the same thing there. Ah, they defeated it before we could just uh, hit it from the top. So small Bulborbs, like the uh, Pellet Posies that you see here, can be carried back to the onion for Pikmin. And you might have uh, seen that one of those pellets we carried back earlier was yellow. Here's another yellow one. And the yellow ones won't give us as many Pikmin, besides looking cool. But there's a reason for that, and there's something that you'll see later. Now, to throw faster, stand in place. It's easier if you stand in place, and then tilt the, uh, the C-stick towards you to get the Pikmin directly around you, and then hammer the A button in conjunction with that. Because the Pikmin will be so close to you, you can, you can uh, throw them at rapid fire. It's a good strategy to know. It took me a long time to find out how that works. It's more useful in this game than in the sequel, because in the other one, um, Pikmin generally are quicker to respond when you press the A button to throw. It still works then, though, I think. But you can really feel how helpful it is in this game. And, of course, we got a lot of Pikmin from that stuff that we're carrying back. I think Dwarf Bulbworms give you, like, four or five seeds. Probably four. Five sounds like too much. And as you can see, we're getting a lot of Pikmin under our command, and you can have as many as a hundred following you at once, and extra ones will just be stored inside the onions until you can call them out. So there's a ten one, so that'll take ten Pikmin to lift it up. And these are just as easy to defeat as ever. <laughs> His eyes were rolling. And there's our next ship part as well. It's quite heavy, though. Why? It's external fuel done ammo. It has an unlimited energy supply. I won't have to worry about saving electricity anymore. This will make my fight for survival a bit easier. So it's basically a pair of giant batteries. And it takes 40 Pikmin to lift, so we're going to have to go back and get quite a few. And then return to be able to even pick it up. And it's at this time that I think I should mention that the reason a lot of the episodes from this point on during the LP and future LPs are shorter is because you might have known this if you've uh, had a look at some of the messages that I've set um, in the past that my uploader it takes forever for me to upload videos not just the number of days in between but it's because it fails so often during the time um, that it takes for me to start the upload and then for it to successfully finish usually my internet will just uh, completely fail before then making the video fail and not come out and make you have to wait a couple more days which is very annoying so I figured that the shorter that I make these videos, uh, the more likely it is that I'll be able to get them up successfully. So even if they are shorter, it's going to be more quality because hopefully we'll be able to get uh, videos out faster the day after the next, and things like that. 
Just have a better schedule all around. And it's kind of ironic too because recently uh, YouTube sent me a magic message saying that my videos can officially now be longer than um, 15 minutes. And I mean this could be helpful just in case we have some more longer episodes, which will probably happen at some point. But for the most part, episodes are going to be shorter. Now, I recorded... I'm, I'm recording these uh, Pikmin episodes, and the thing is, I got these recorded um, before I got that magic message. So these are going to be shorter videos, say, um, maybe 8 to 9 minutes each or something like that. Because each Pikmin day takes roughly between 15 and 20 and like I said, I made these before my time limit, my time limit was extended beyond 15 minutes. So each day, so each in-game day is going to take about two episodes to finish. It's not a big problem, but I thought I'd let you know. So now we finally have these batteries in our position. And we can actually see them. They're actually quite huge. This should light things up. No more candles for me. Alright, so we have two out of the 30 ship parts. Not bad. It's a start. Now, I'm going to show you about that rapid throwing technique from earlier. This is a good example of how you can use it to save time. So just hold the C stick and then hammer the A button, and before you know it, you'll have all of them up on the ledge without having to wait for each individual one to be thrown. You can just throw them all in a big burst like this. Now, how do we catch up to them, you might wonder. Well, go into the little pond here and walk up that route. It's easier on the right side of the route. And now carefully, do not wake up the big bulborb there. That's a spidey bulborb. They're incredibly dangerous to attack from the front. So use a C stick to direct Pikmin to the side and get around the bulborb. Thank you. Please don't wake him up. Or it up. And there's the next ship part as well. And another one over there, which we really can't get to right now. It's a chalk absorber. This apparatus can interact with the shaking and swaying that normally occurs during flight. It's smooth sailing with this in place, usually. Alright, so until we pick that up, use the C-Stick to swarm it from behind. Always from behind, not the front. The front is where it eats. Oh no! What happened right there, it was very hard for you to notice, but if you just rewind uh, the video a little bit, you'll notice that we had 71 Pikmin. We have 69 now because of a horrible glitch in this game. A horrible, terrible gl glitch, especially if you're trying to do this with no deaths, is that sometimes whenever an enemy dies, usually a big one like a big bulborb, Pikmin may get squashed underneath it and then disappear off the map without hearing any other sound. You'll just see the number go down. It can often cause the counter to malfunction and do really weird things. So it's generally a horrible glitch and it happened to us. So we didn't really... It's gonna say that we lost two Pikmin, but it's only because of the glitch, not because it ate them. Because, um... Oh, okay, another message. Might as well read it. My clock has indicated the coming of noon. From now on, I must pay close attention to the sun meter on my monitor and choose my actions accordingly. Yeah, I've already told you all this stuff, all about the, uh, the screen. Now, the reason that this glitch sometimes happens, I think might have to do with something in the beta. In the beta, I remember it showing an enemy falling and clearly killing Pikmin that uh, were squashed underneath it. And that's not supposed to happen in the game, but I think due to this glitch, it was left in from the beta. So it can happen, and it can definitely mess up a file. In terms of trying to do stuff perfectly, it won't happen so perfectly. Now, back to stuff that's actually going on. The bull warb is going to give us quite a few Pikmin, and we now have 3 out of 30 parts, which gives us 10% completion already. It's really quite a short game, once you know how to do it. Shock Absorber. This nifty little device counteracts the shaking and swaying experience in typical space flight. Alright, well, next episode we will continue with the second half of this day, so see you then.